Wall was born in Vancouver, Canada in 1946 and was proud to be a Canadian. And he often talked about it in interviews. He never forgot where he came from and would end up moving back after retirement. Wall was encouraged to pursue the arts from an extremely young age. He wasn't always a world-renowned photographer though. In fact, it all started by painting in his shed at the age of 14. A first glimpse of inspiration came in the form of American abstract artist Jackson Pollock. He is a leading contemporary photographer who uses backlighting and large-scale photos on a regular basis. Most of his work is meant to be near documentary, meaning that the photos are made to look like they've been taken while people engage in their everyday activities, but in fact are heavily staged. Jeff always attempts to dive into the people's minds and produce a photograph that is the best representation of real life. Slowing the time of photography down by a kind of a technique that creates obstacles in order to make a picture. Wall's taken a step in a new direction by taking away the plasticity of setting up for a photo shoot and now takes real time pictures capturing a real moment in time. Wall attended the University of British Columbia and received his BA in Art History in 1968. He did postgraduate work in London, England while undertaking a thesis of which was never completed on French painter Marcel Duchamp. Dead Troops Talk is a scene made by Wall showing what is the aftermath of a Soviet ambush in Afghanistan. It's possibly his most famous photo as it sold for $3.6 million at Christie's auction in 2012. At the time, it was the third most expensive photograph ever sold. Wall's work is often characterized as single frame cinematic masterpieces. Much of his work focuses on people in the midst of social tension changing cities along with their demographics, intersections, suburbs, and dead zones. Wall's photos represent the world through his eyes, and he can spend days or up to weeks trying to get the perfect setting. In one of his well-known photos called Picture for Woman, it represents the bad relationship between photographers and their female models. This photo called Storyteller highlights the irony of indigenous people being homeless on their own land. The Destroyed Room is one of my favorite of Wall's photos. It is his first and most iconic photo as it depicts a seemingly ravaged bedroom that is usually seen as an intimate and tidy space. It leaves the viewer asking, what was the purpose of the destruction and who did it? Wallace controversially left remnants of the set in the picture, adding an uneasiness to the final product. This photo is based on the death of Sandinopolis, painted by Eugene Delacroix in 1827. It dates back to a king that refused to surrender to the enemy and chose suicide instead, but he made sure that all of his valuables and belongings would be ravaged and destroyed before killing himself. Many parts of Wall's photo are similar to that of Delacroix's painting, such as the diagonal composition of items from the top left corner all the way to the bottom right. Wall chose to leave the photo with no people in it, leaving a lot to be interpreted. This is something he often uses and is one of the main parts of the photo. He is a photographer who revolutionized the way people take photographs by adding a hint of cinematography and adding what he views as a perfect photo. I really like this photo because it doesn't use a lot of compositional attributes and leaves much of the understanding to the viewer. Another one of Wall's photographs that I'm a big fan of is A Sudden Gust of Wind. This photo is based on the artwork done by Japanese painter Katsushuki Hokusai a man that Wall admired and studied in his younger years. The photo shows several people that were caught off guard by the weather. What makes this photo interesting is that it is 
a combination of months of photo film digitally edited into one final product. The photo uses the rule of odds by having five people visible, and it also utilizes leading lines through the river in the middle. What it also does well is apply the rule of thirds by having the horizon one third of the way up the photo. What caught my eye in this photo is the use of a large landscape and empty space. It also leaves the viewers in a state of questioning, trying to figure out what happened to these Hokusai travelers. I chose to study Jeff Wall because he is unlike any other photographer I've ever seen, not to mention he's Canadian. I certainly learned a lot about him, and I hope you did too.